Hello, my name is Spencer, and welcome to Copenhagen. Just kidding, this isn't Copenhagen, but when I play Copenhagen, I certainly feel like I'm in Copenhagen. Come on, let me show you more about it at my desk. Copenhagen is a town that has pretty buildings along the harbor, and in this game, you're going to be building those buildings with your beautiful facades, and you're going to do that with your cards and, well, with these facade tiles. Now, I have the deluxe box. It comes with plastic uh, tiles, which, you know, they're, they're exactly the same as the regular, but they're just heftier, thicker, and, oh, and you can actually see through them, through the windows. Hello, I see you. Uh, but these are what you're going to be using to build your facade. And the way you do that, on your turn, you have two actions. You can take two cards from the, the harbor over here. Um, and to do that, you've got to take two cards that are adjacent. These are adjacent, um, but otherwise there are no restrictions. Just take two. Um, or you can play, um, build a tile. And to do that, you put down a number of cards equal to um, the tile that you want and of the same color. So if I want to play this blue tile right here, I would need four blue cards because it has four squares. One, two, three, four. Play my cards, get the tile, put it down. Whoops. Earthquake. And when you put your tiles down, you have to put down just like Tetris, as if gravity is falling. In fact, I think this game is the most like Tetris of, of any of the, the games that use these type of tiles. Just tiles, just because they fall down exactly how you would place them. You can't do it like that. That's wrong. The goal of the game is to get the most points. Uh, the most you can get, well, actually, the game is over when one player gets 12 points. And so the way you do that, you'll get points. You'll get a point for every row that you fill up. You'll get two points for every column that you fill up. However, if you can do a row full of windows, it's worth two points. And if you can do a column worth windows, or that's full of windows, it's worth four points. So you can be pretty awesome if you really try. Some other things, if you cover up these coat of arms symbols here on the wall, or you fill up a, a row that has the coat of arms symbol, you can do a special thing. There are three different things you can choose. You can either get a single special tile to put wherever you want, as long as it matches or it follows the rules. Or you can get a special ability tile. And there are several of these. There may do things like, oh, you can pull up two that aren't adjacent. Or you can uh, build with, with, less, with one less card, that kind of thing. Um, and then the third thing is, once you use one of these tiles, you can't use it anymore until you, you do the third thing. Um, which you do that by <laughs> going to one of these coat of arms. So get a special tile, get a special action tile, and then refresh special action tile are the three things you can do. Um, I found that when we play, no one's ever got to 12 points. So that's the end game trigger. First to 12 wins. Everybody's really focused on filling up their, their boards, and that doesn't always bring you to 12 points. It's really more about um, your, the way you optimize your tile placement and the usage of those special tiles. Um, and so we normally will run out of cards. What happens is instead of, if no one reaches 12 points first, you'll go through the deck twice. So if we go through the deck, we'll shuffle it, go through it again. And by that point, um, if no one's reached 12 points, then whoever has the most points wins. And so that's usually what happens for us. But even with that, the game isn't more than 30 20, 30, 40 minutes. The box says 20 to 40 minutes and also says um, 8 and up, which I think is fair. I did teach it to my 6-year-old daughter, which she got it, she understood it, but wasn't that interesting to her. She would rather be tearing down walls instead of building them. Um, <laughs> boy, how's that for a metaphor? But um, I think that you didn't, wouldn't have any problems with, with people building the, these buildings. They would be able to get this this game just fine and be a nice challenge and you know, it's pretty basic when it comes to the cards and the placing tiles but then with the special abilities that really changes things up and um, that's where the pros will really come out is how they are able to uh, manipulate and use those tiles to the best of their abilities. I've got more things to say so let me roll over here. Okay okay final thoughts. So recently I've become a fan of these polyomino style games like Indian Summer or Cottage Garden where it's just there's something about the 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 spatial puzzle of putting things together and and um, making the the optimal configuration of your pieces that I love, and those are awesome and they're very challenging. Um, but this one, Copenhagen, is very simple, 
and I think that's a great thing because if you're wanting to share this type of game with somebody that's newer, um, maybe grandma or, uh, or little Susie or whatever, and you want to show how much you love these style of games, this is perfect because there are only two actions, as I mentioned. You can either take cards or you put tiles down on your board. And everybody can pretty much get the idea of Tetris. You're wanting to fill up, plug in all the holes or whatever. And so that concept is going to be known by, well, pretty much anybody. Um, but the great thing about Copenhagen is even though those two actions are pretty simple, there is so much more into the game that you have to think about. So, for example, I can easily take these two cards here, or I can wait and go ahead and use the cards I have now to put down a tile. But if I do that, then I'm risking my opponents from getting the cards that I need. And then if I wait to uh, put down a tile, but instead on this turn I take cards, well then I'm running the risk of my opponents taking the tiles that I need. That's one of the things that I love is there's this sense of urgency with the tiles because they're limited. So there may only be three of a certain tile, and that may be the exact one that you need to completely make a beautiful facade. And yet, if you wait too long, it'll be gone, and you won't have another chance at getting it. And so that sense of urgency really adds that, that moment of, of, oh no, what do I do? What do I do? I could go this way, I could go that way. How much do I want to risk it? And so the strategy behind that is, is fascinating to me because it is. It's so simple and yet you really got to push your luck sometimes and try to read your opponents and pay attention to what they're doing and see what they could possibly go after. Pay attention to the cards that they're getting. Um, so I would I hesitate to say that this is some of a, of a solitaire game because you are mostly focusing on your board, but you have to pay attention to what everybody else is doing um, if you really want to beat them essentially. Um, you've got to pay attention to the number of tiles in the stacks, what cards they're getting, how they're building their board, um, a lot lot going on there. Um, another thing you have to think about is how much you want to go for uh, awesomeness, I guess is what you could say. Like, you don't have to fill in the board with a bunch of windows, but it does feel nice. Hey, if I can make a column that's full of all windows. I'm going to get a lot of points. But how much time am I wasting by saving up my cards just to get the right tile that has all windows. Um, and so that's fun to play around with too. Um, sure, I may not be getting the four points that I could be getting by, by completing this column with all windows, but I could be getting some other pieces to fill in the board. And then there's that. Do you save all your cards to get big pieces or do you spend them quickly to get smaller pieces and lots of smaller pieces in the time that it would take you to get one or two big pieces? Again, deceptively simple or deceptively complex, whatever the way the phrase goes, there's so much more here to think about than simply cards, tiles. So, with all of that, it's beautiful. Is that a word? Everybody uses that word for everything. I like the colors. They're very vibrant. Uh, the tiles, I love the plastic tiles. Again, not a necessity, but if you want to spring for those, great. I love anything plasticky and, and heavy like that, especially... I can look through the window at you. Um, but with all that being said, I think that I could answer the question, hey Spencer, do you like Copenhagen? Yes. Yes, I do. So much so that I would give it a seal of approval. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you or someone you know has a bad case of the grumpies, might I recommend the Lighten Up Initiative YouTube channel. It's where I publish all kinds of funny videos to help people remember that board games are made to have fun and be exciting, not to be taken seriously. So, have fun with your games and don't let anyone else keep you from doing that. So long for now.